Well, the Saints are a perfect example as to why I never get geeked up on anybody, especially so damn early in the season. Started out with a couple of really big wins, and everybody's like, oh boy, here we come. They're back. Derek Carr's back. He's playing his best. Yada, yada, yada. Now here we are into November. Their head coach is getting fired. You got wide receivers talking horrifically about Derek Carr, and now their head coach is fired. And by the way, they're two and seven. They've lost seven in a row. I never get geeked up on anybody in September for this exact reason right here. I'm not going to get into why I hate preseason polls again. Done that a million and one times. It is what it is. If you want to hear it, go check the archives. But in the meantime, this is why I don't do it. This is why you didn't hear me get on a microphone and go, well, Derek Carr, he's back. No, Derek Carr is who Derek Carr is. And that is a mid-level at best quarterback in the NFL. He's very hit and miss. He'll have one really phenomenal season and then another really terrible season. He's been injury prone. Now he's leaving his guys out to dry. And look, as far as what's being said about, about him on Twitter, and you know, he can say, look, everybody loves me, but I've never got along with him. Da 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 da. What's happened is is because Derek Carr is such a likable guy. Nobody's really wanted to say anything. That's the reality of the situation. It's the same thing with Dak Prescott. It was the same thing with Tim Tebow. But don't forget Demarius Thomas RIP. When Tim Tebow rolled out of there and he went to the Jets, Demarius Thomas was very quick. Hey, man, don't let the door split you on the way out, Brody. Just because somebody is likable does not mean that we can't be honest about him. And I think the frustration of the situation with the Saints is just boiled completely over. It's not that they are without talent. Phenomenal with the running back. Decent at wide receiver. The offensive line certainly isn't the worst in the NFL. Uh, You could blame play calling a little bit if you want to, but let's keep it a buck here. Derek Carr was not going to save the day in New Orleans. And it's not exactly like they're in the world's toughest division. Look at all the problems that the Carolina Panthers have had this year. New Orleans couldn't beat them. Tampa Bay's a pretty hit-and-miss football team right now. I don't know why everybody's so geeked up on Baker Mayfield and what's going on over there. With the talent that he's got around him, they should be a better football team, to be honest. The Atlanta Falcons, they're pretty hit and miss. They're not using, you know, B. John Robinson, I think, to his fullest. Now, obviously, he's had how many games in a row now where he's got over 100 yards from scrimmage, but that's total yards. I, I think that they could use a little more ground and pound, grind it out football, but, you know, it is what it is. I, I just think that given the location, given the schedule, they should be a much better football team than they are. And if you want to prove yourself as a team, then you have to beat some of the better teams in the NFL. And this loss just signifies who New Orleans really is right now. Now, do I think that a better quarterback could come in and potentially save them? I don't know, man. It's rare, but it happens. It's rare, but it happens. Tom Brady saved the New England Patriots. Jane Daniels, what's going on over there? There are rumors flying that players want to be traded to Washington. Why? Because they want to play with Jane Daniels. Guarantee you. Of course, conversely, it hasn't done anything for the Chicago Bears and Caleb Williams. Ask the Cleveland Browns about having quarterbacks year after year after year for 20-plus years. Look, I, I think that we have to come to a place where we understand something. Derek Carr is a seasoned guy. He's a veteran, but the Raiders didn't want him anymore. Their quarterback situation is no better. I think they should have told everybody that everything they needed to know. I'm just being honest. It should have told everything to everybody that they needed to know. Anytime anybody reveres potentially Jimmy G or Donald, who really didn't do much at Purdue, or it, some of these other guys, it, it tells you all you need to know about that quarterback. I mean, if we're going to be spending our days being critical about Deck Prescott, then we need to be just as critical of Derek Carr, which I have been. But Derek Carr doesn't get a lot of negative press because he's so damn likable. And, of course, he doesn't get trolled by Stephen A. Smith. Well, because Stephen A. just 
loves trolling the Dallas Cowboys. And speaking of which, look, I, I think we're all just a little tired of, of Jerry Jones. The, the issue is this. It's not that what he always says is necessarily wrong. The issue becomes the fact that he's on there presenting himself as if he's a head coach. If he could, he would be coaching the Dallas Cowboys. But I don't know who he would have to blame after that. Now, he can say he's got confidence and talk about Michael Irvin and and give the pass and all that, you know, and I get it, history repeats itself, but this is just not that situation. This is a very loaded roster, and people can blame Mike McCarthy all they want to, but I'll be honest, I don't think those guys want to play for Dak anymore. And when you've got Dak looking like he's mouthing the words, we can suck, well, I mean, at this point, There's no we. There never has been a we. And and I know that there are so many Dak apologists out there, but at some point, he's got to share a good majority of the responsibility with that football team. And and people can blame Jerry Jones all they want to. At the end of the day, he is the GM, so it's hard not to. He's the one signing the check, so it's hard not to. But this is a spontaneous combustion that has happened with the Dallas Cowboys. And it didn't look like it was going to be that way, but it is. And most people, I think, thought, well, here we go. We're going to make the playoffs, but we're going to lose in the first round again, probably. I I wasn't secure in the fact that Dallas could make the playoffs this year. I really didn't think that they were going to be able to do it. You you dumped way too much money in the hands of a quarterback who is mid-level. You know, the one great quality that Dak Prescott has had about him over the years as a quarterback is he doesn't turn the football over a hell, hell of a lot. That's all changed. Now, look, I understand he got hurt. Cooper Rush came in. It is what it is. My thing is this. I remember when Cooper Rush was in a couple of years ago, and he was playing very mediocre football, but the team was winning. I mean, you can't argue with the results. And, you know, let's keep it a buck here. Troy Aitman is known by most of us for being a game manager because of all the talent that he had around him. But when you pay somebody that type of money, the problem is, though, is you're going to throw the football a lot more, and you're going to expect a lot more out of him, but Dak just isn't good enough to carry the load, and I don't want to hear about Zeke being hurt because there's no game plan for the running backs. I mean, damn, if we're being honest, Jerry Jones may not be wrong about Derek Carr. He wouldn't fit in our system right now. Well, I'll tell you why he wouldn't fit, because you just want to rear back and throw it, because Dak's got to earn his keep. Well, that's not happening, and it's not going to happen. And now you are financially stuck. It should have been an obvious decision to let this season play out, see how things go. But I I would have picked up Derrick Henry, man. I, I would have done whatever I needed to do to win football games, but I I think for some weird reason, maybe Jerry thrives on this BS because he gets to be front runner in front of the cameras. He can't wait. And of course, everybody's going to be around him because hell, we all need a soundbite, right? The media needs a soundbite. They need something that's easy to talk about. What research do you have to do on Monday morning when all you got to do is go Jerry Jones? Pretty damn simple, right? And you know it's going to hit on media, and and he knows too. And it's just really bizarre to me, though, that somebody would thrive on that type of publicity. All this negative BS, man. I mean, it's weird to think that that kind of money can be made. But, you know, I I watched the Anna Nicole Smith documentary recently. Whether or not I believe her or her mom, I don't know. But her mom did say that whenever Anna Nicole told negative stories, she made a hell of a lot more money. So I guess if anybody's to blame, maybe it's us because we seem to love this shit. It is what it is. All right, Anthony Richardson, haven't had a chance to get to it. I was busy last weekend. I was calling MMA fights, but uh, look, Flacco is still going to be the starting quarterback, even given what happened yesterday, obviously. When Anthony Richardson first came out of the draft, One of the things that really pissed me off was they were comparing him to Donovan McNabb. And I just needed everybody to stop the cap right then and there. 
That aggravated the living hell out of me. There's no comparing him to Donovan McNabb. Not even close. I didn't think that in college. I didn't understand it. He only had one full season as a starting quarterback. And in addition to that, the Gators were not a good football team. Now, I understand that that season, they they beat the Pac-12 champion, right? Utah at the beginning of the year. So initially, it looked like they were going to be good. But if all you were relying on was pure athletic ability, I mean, this is very reminiscent of the Jamarcus Russell situation. Never understood why the Raiders took him. Never, I, I just had no clue. I really don't get the Anthony Richardson pick. I never have. I never will. I said he'd be out of the league in three years. We're midway through number two, and here we are where he's tapping out, not playing. He's lazy. He's lazy, and now he's soft. Yeah, I'm a little tired coming back from the in- injury. and I, Bro, this is the NFL. Everybody's tired. Everybody's hurting. Every quarterback is getting knocked around. Believe it or not, I know, I know the rules have changed. We all saw that BS call with Aaron Rodgers. I'm, but everybody's getting knocked around. Everybody's running around all over the place now, especially the defensive lines. They're changing. You know, the defensive coordinators adjusted. Okay, fine. You're not going to let us play pass defense. We're just going to bull rush the hell out of everybody. Basically, everybody on the front four is going to be the exact same caliber of football player, and we're just going to mash. That's it. That's the game plan. All quarterbacks are under duress this season, man. You're not unique in that regard, but you know, everybody wants to pretend that they're different for some weird reason. And I don't get it because every quarterback in the NFL is pretty much looking at the same damn front four. I mean, seriously. And, and look, I'm not saying the offensive line doesn't get any of the blame, but they should be a better football team than what they are. Now, do I think Flacco's going to get you to where you want to go? No. You know, everybody's so geeked up, you know, oh, Cleveland should have kept him. Bro, stop. He had five turnovers or he had eight picks, you know, <laughs> eight picks in five games, like, and then a bunch of turnovers in the playoffs. Can we can we quit? Okay. I love the story. I can appreciate where everybody's coming from. Flacco's playing about as good as he can, but nobody picks him up to go and be a starter. And there's reasons for that. Okay. Now, at this point with Indianapolis, he's a he's a better option, right? Because we know Flacco. He's not going to just tap out. But if that's as good as it gets in Indianapolis, yeah, I, I think, honestly, dropping change, man. A lot of change. I think, honestly, um, laundry day. I think, honestly, you're just going to have to let it go. I, I think... You're going to have to rebuild, start over. You drafted quarterback. It didn't work out. Oh, fucking well, man. On to the next thing, right? But but who is there in college right now other than, I mean, you got Shador out there, obviously, but your, your, your season's not bad enough as of the moment to get him because he's going high. I mean, seriously, probably Travis Hunter one, Shador number two, depending on how things go. Could be vice versa, but. Man, I, I I don't see it. So now you got to figure out what you can do in a trade. And we're not going to throw out Dak's name because who the hell is going to take on that woolly mammoth of a contract? It's just not going to happen. Something I want to tap on here real quick. You know, a couple of years ago, I did an interview with a gambling agency for sports betting. And I really just didn't like how the interview went. In fact, if I remember correctly, I never posted it. And if I did, I I think I eventually decided to take it down. Because I just, I think a part of me feels guilty. You know, Daniel O'Crunt, who invented what was back then called popcorn baseball, now known as fantasy sports, said, now I know how the guy who invented the atom bomb feels. It's just ruining everything. Every play, everything that you see, where there's a prop bet involved of some kind, ESPN, CBS, Fox, all of them, Bleacher Report, they can't wait to make a post about it. I don't care what the prop bet was. I don't give a damn about the over-under on a football game. I just want to watch the game. Leave the betting for the betters. 
But the problem is, though, is it's become so big that I'm, and they're sponsored by these guys, and you see, there's literally no getting away from it. In most states, all you got to be is 18, have a debit card, and a cell phone. Download the app, boom. People want to talk about TV ratings up until you know basically November for for the NFL. Look, the NFL, first of all, is nobody to blame but themselves. Number one, because of the promotion of betting all the time, we can't watch anything without betting. Same with the NBA. I mean, pro sports is literally just bet, 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 bet. That's literally all it is. All the commercials, everything. The presentation is garbage now. I I hate it. The crowds, you you can barely hear them. It it sounds like a, a golf channel. On a Sunday afternoon now. It makes you want to take a nap. But the, the the presentation is just too formal. You know. Except for the playoffs. Then all of a sudden they really amp up. Probably pipe in some crowd noise. But I just. I for one am tired of seeing it. I'm just keeping it a buck. I can't stand it. I'm over it personally. You know. But it is what it is. I realize it's not going anywhere. But. Man, I I really get tired of it, if I'm just being honest with you, man. All right, real quick here, college football top 25 polls. Obviously, as we all know, the first college football playoff is going to be coming out tomorrow. But in the meantime, Oregon, all the number one votes. After that, you got Georgia, Ohio State, Miami. I would I would love to see Miami ahead of Ohio State, if I'm being honest with you. I know that they've had to make some comeback wins, but... I think that they're a much more complete team. Defensively, they've faltered a little bit recently, but in the second half, they've done so good at making adjustments. Their quarterback, Cam Ward, is far and away much better than Will Howard is. Um, He's To me, he's the most improved quarterback in all of college football this year. He's in a place that fits him and suits him. I, I would take Miami, and then you got Texas, you got Penn State. I would have preferred them to drop a little bit more that look they're they're so reliant on drew aller and i don't get it they have one of the best run games in college football at least they should and they they just want to put it exclusively in his hands over the last couple of seasons he cannot do it he can't push the ball up the field the accuracy level isn't there he's not great at throwing somebody open he's he's throw it five to ten yards 20 if you're lucky that's it that that's what he does i I would love to see Indiana ahead, but it is what it is. They're back there at number eight. The disrespect is real. And look, I I know that a lot of people say I'm a hypocrite because of the way that I feel about Colorado and Prime and their weak schedule. The difference is Indiana's blowing everybody out. It was a very similar situation last year with Michigan. That schedule, for the most part, at the beginning of the year was not very good. The tough games were on the back end, and they ended up winning those football games that came away with the championship. Whether you want to say it was tainted or not, it is what it is. Let's not forget midway part of the season, Connor Stallions was gone. So they continued to win football games. They were pretty much being dominant for the most part. Indiana's having a very similar season. They're a better football team than Penn State. They're better than Texas right now. To me, honestly, I would have, again, I would still have Georgia at number one. I would have Oregon at two. Then I would, honestly, I would have Indiana, and then I would have Miami. So, you know, it it is what it is. BYU, eh, still not sold. Notre Dame, still not sold. Alabama at 11 is way, 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 way too high. Way too high. You got Boise State in there. Genty, pretty much a one-trick pony. But the the thing is, is nobody's stopping him. So, <laughs> yeah, you, you're going to have to stop him. And, you know, we'll figure out, you know, how good the quarterback situation is right there. But Genty, what he's got going on right now. And, and by the way, it is comparable to Barry Sanders, whether people want to believe it or not. I know Barry did it in less games. But Genty's being – he's not playing in the second half of a lot of games. Okay? He's <laughs> – He's getting a lot of this in two quarters, all right? So with what he's got going on, between him and Travis Hunter right now, the Heisman Trophy race, I mean, it's it's pretty much all them. Let's keep it a buck. Texas A&M at 15, don't like. LSU's way too high at 14. You got Iowa State in there, okay. Army, I don't have a problem with them being where they are. Um, 
I don't know, though, that even if they finish the year undefeated, they, they would get into the CFP, but it, it, they're, they're going to be on the road. That's for damn sure. Kansas State, they just lost again this weekend. I, I think they're too high at 22. You got Vanderbilt still in there. Not really sure about that. Louisville. Yeah, I, I guess it is what it is. Colorado pretty much staying 21, right? You know, I, I know that everybody says that, you know, there's winnable games, winnable games. Well, Kansas State, by that notation, had a pretty winnable schedule as well. And they could not get it done against Houston, okay? And remaining for them, they got Arizona State, Cincinnati, and then Iowa State last game of the year. So we'll, we'll see the Big 12 is still wide open. That doesn't mean that it's deep. It doesn't mean that it's great. It just means that it's wide open. It's all there is to it. And I, I look, I think A&M is way too high. I mean, come on, you just lost to South Carolina? Fancy storm the field all they want to. That's real cute. <laughs> like. You know, be, and it's not because they think A and M is worthy of that. Let's be clear here; it's really got more to do with well, we we've accomplished something. Damn it, we might as well celebrate what we can. Let, let's keep that a buck. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I anticipate from the committee tomorrow. I don't think they're going to be all that dissimilar from what we're seeing with the AP poll right now, which is why I hate it. Power of influence. It is what it is. Again, I think that we need to do away with polls in general. If we want to do them, you know, to do them, that's fine. But I don't think that we should have a ranking system for the college football playoff because at that point it becomes an invitational. What we should have is a direct setup playoff system. You write out the rules, you follow the rules and that's it. This is not ballet. This is not ice skating. Okay. This is not that. This isn't boxing or, you know, or MMA or any combat sport where we got people going round after round after round. It's not that anymore. This is a true playoff system if we do it like that. If not, then it's an invitational. We think you're one of the hottest girls in school, so we're going to go ahead and invite you to the dance because we think you're going to draw our ratings. We're going to try to create the best matchup. This ain't MMA, man. It, we're, we're not trying to get really great matchups and big money fights. And I and I still stand by the philosophy, if you're undefeated, you deserve a shot. You get blown out, it is what it is, but let's not pretend that other teams haven't been blown out in the, in the playoffs or in BCS championship games because it's happened. Got to make football decisions, not boardroom decisions. Shit's getting annoying. It's been annoying. I'm tired of it. All right, I'm Drew Duncan, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's all at Drew Duncan Radio and wherever you listen to the podcast. Take your device play, Drew Duncan. You guys have a great one. Everybody be safe. It's fucking weather's crazy, right? Tornadoes, man. Tornadoes. Have a plan, especially for people out there in Oklahoma. All those brick homes with no shelter space. Sanity in Tornado Alley. Stay safe, y'all.